This episode of The Dungeon Booth is sponsored by Roll20. Take your game online with the free virtual tabletop that runs straight out of your web browser. You get click-to-roll character sheets, built-in video and voice chat, and you can even upload your own maps and tokens. Create a free account today by going to roll20.net forward slash start forward slash the dungeon booth. The Dungeon Booth is also sponsored by Elderwood Academy, makers of finely crafted wooden tabletop gaming accessories like the Codex Dice Tower, Scroll Rolling Tray, and Spellbook Bespoke Luxury Gaming Boxes. Go design your own custom accessory today at elderwoodacademy.com. Welcome back to the Dungeon Booth. You outpace Rudy, and he kind of falls back. And he says, I, I, can't, I can't go any further because of the tangleweed, but you guys, it's just go that way. It's just right up ahead. You'll see it. Uh, and, uh, but I'll see you guys later. I hope you guys are safe and don't die. I, wanna, I hope I see you again. I, I love you. <laughs> cool, bye. I stop remembering the tangleweed. Yeah. <laughs> Limerick I thought think, it would be a little closer. Limerick hears it and thinks about calling out to you and then thinks about like how funny it might be and just waits. I I want to look to see how, if I can tell if the uh, tangleweed is close, the poisonous weed. Well, so you you start to see it, I mean, immediately. Okay. And within about, you know, eight more steps, you are face to face with a four foot high unbroken wall of some of the nastiest thorny vines you've ever seen snaking off in every direction in a ring in a unbroken ring around this hill where far off the top, you see the ancient battered watchtower. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would I roll nature to see if I know anything about this? You can absolutely do that. All right, you guys. (laughs) But I'll also tell you that um, as, as Limerick's kind of scratching her chin and looking at it, you, um, uh, Erica, you see to your right, there's an object inside of the thorns. And so you, you step a little bit closer and you kind of peer closer at it. And sure enough, it's a body. Cool. And it appears to have been either totally consumed by the thorns or killed and thrown into the thorns. One or the other. Huh? She just kind of raises her (laughs) hand and goes, um, Guys, <laughs> mm. well, look at this. That goes over. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> now Limerick comes over and says, D- does it have both feet? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just am really interested in where this foot came from. <laughs> Can we check to see if it has yeah. both feet? Yeah. You look and see that both of the phalanges are in place. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. There's no flesh. There's from? no flesh, not a oh. stitch. Mm. I think this... Carcass is much older than the foot. Yeah, but I mean, the bones of the foot it would have, it would have no foot bones. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted to do a some kind of check, a nature, nature check. on this thing to see Go if I it. know anything about it. Go All for right, it. you guys. Okay, twelve, fifteen, total. fifteen. So with fifteen, you um, you know two things about it. The first thing you know is that uh, this is alive, and not alive in the sense that a plant that photosynthesizes is alive. It's, it's a living thing that will react to you. So your motion, your movement, your sounds, um, the thorns will react in kind and they will attempt to ensnare you. Um, you also know that there is not, uh, there's not an easy way to kill them. Um, they are very resistant to the types of things that would normally kill these sorts of creatures like fire. Mm -hmm. Fire does not do almost anything to these things. Um, and then in addition to that, you notice one more thing. Uh, it seems like there's something shaking all of them. So in the same sense that if you reach up into an apple tree and pull down an apple, you'll shake the entire bough of the tree. It seems like something's moving within the thorns, not the thorns moving themselves, something moving within the thorns that appears to be very gently making them undulate, making them kind of shake a little bit. Cool. I share this information sure. with the group and I say, I swear to God, if this freaking bats come out of here, I'm leaving you. <laughs> okay. So I'm, so that I take this information to mean no fire probably won't do anything. No, I don't know if we have like acid or something. Yeah. Well, they did say there was a path. So I feel like we should look for that unless 
there's a reason whatever is in there is not being eaten. Well, so you mentioned you mentioned looking for a path. You do sort of look around where the grass seems to stop at the edge of the wall of thorns. There is a spot that's kind of like 30 yards to your right where it seems like the grass is dead, but it's dead in a straight line. So there's a patch here that has no grass at all. And then outside of that, it's kind of a ring of yellowed grass. But then there's a straight line from that area straight into the wall of thorns. And all the grass along that path appears to be yellowed and dead. Are there rocks around? There are not any rocks around, but as you get closer, as you're looking at it, there is a smell. (laughs) There is that same sort of pungent smell that you specifically (laughs) noticed when you were in the forest clearing from before that were on the boots Uh of Ruda. Okay, you guys, the smell that nobody smelled... (laughs) Okay, I'm not crazy. I smell the smell. Do you smell the smell? It's it's here. Here is the smell. It's way stronger here than it was in the Mm, fourth. It's it's like pungent. Like you can smell it as soon as you walk up. You can smell it as soon as you walk up. That smell is what I was smelling. But like before with the (laughs) bandit. I swear it wasn't me. (laughs) Um, Does anybody have like, I don't know, like something small and round? I just want to like roll something through the grass and make see if if this thing is gonna try to eat it like i just want to see darts berries can i have a berry yeah cool so take a berry and i try to sort of toss it through the dead grass path to see if the thorns react Uh, so what happens is as you sort of toss it maybe kind of underhand you kind of roll it like a bowling ball like a little bowling ball down that path uh almost in perfect proportion to where the berry is the thorns come out to meet it. So as it gets closer, the thorns come out, and at the last moment, the thorns wrap around the berry and suck it into the... Wait, this is just to the wall or to where the dead grass is? To the wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. She flung it towards the wall on the path, right? All right well, I was trying to trace the line of the dead and grass. You, did. you traced okay, it all, all the, way the way there. To the wall. All the way there. Yep. All right. It was a great throw. Cool. So, well, that's not great or helpful, <laughs> <laughs> but we know some things. So, guys, go ahead and make a perception check. Let's see what you can learn about this mysterious path. 16 total. 16, nice. So, I rolled 11, and then I forgot what we add to this. Oh, there it is. Plus nothing, because plus nothing, I'm, it's 11. Okay, yeah, yeah okay. that's right. And it is the plus wisdom? It's it's your wisdom bonus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just rolled 17. Okay, whoa. Wisdom's okay. Mm-hmm. Good, 17. So Erica, you, um, as you're kind of watching Limerick go back and forth and try little things to try to figure out what's going on with this path, it hits you. You know this smell. It's a smell that you used to smell uh, when you would go down to the, the village uh, from where you're from up in the uh, uh, mountains. There was, a, there was a tavern there. And when you would pass outside of the tavern, sometimes you would see the menfolk And they would be outside after a night of drinking, pissing in the street. Mm. And that is the smell. It's the rank odor of urine. Dude, what are you doing with your life, Ruda? (laughs) (laughs) Your boots reek of urine. Experience points. Of interest. Young Vape writes. (laughs) I dig your name, Young Vape. Okay, so here's my tabletop role-playing story. My friends and I, all aged 10 to 12 at the time, were super into Call of Cthulhu. So much so that every single time we ended a game, we'd immediately start a new one. However, we had rules. Every time we'd play, we'd need to be costumed. It was kind of a policy we had to become fully immersed in the world of Call of Cthulhu. We all got super into it. Whenever we couldn't play the game on the board because our moms made us go outside and play and get fresh air, whatever that is, we'd continue the game in an alternate way with ourselves as our characters. Long story short, my friend Jordan, not his actual name, protecting the innocent, I suppose, is Young Vape your actual name? You're protecting yourself as well, I think. Jordan ran out into the road. I can't remember why. Unfortunately, he got hit by a car. <laughs> I probably shouldn't laugh at that. But no broken bones, just a few scrapes and bruises. He didn't shed a tear. He just <laughs> he just ran back up to the rest of the group and said, wiping loose asphalt away from his cheek, how much experience does that get me? Fun time, really great time. Thank you, Young Vape. <laughs> 
This might be the only uh, story that I get of someone getting hit by a car while playing a tabletop role-playing game. Call of Cthulhu is a great game, by the way. If any of you have not played it before, please do give it a try. And Young Vape, for sending in this crazy story of your friend Jordan, not their real name, getting hit by a car while playing Call of Cthulhu, I'm going to give you three free months of Roll20 Plus, which is their premium subscription, courtesy of our friends at Roll20.net. Roll20 is a free virtual tabletop tool set that runs right in your browser. It's used by over 3.5 million players around the world. You can interact with your party with built-in video voice chat. You create your character sheets easily with just a few clicks. You can play your favorite games like Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu is also on there, and lots more. So congrats, Young Vape. You're going to get all those free features and the premium features of the Roll20 Plus subscription, like dynamic lighting effects that you can use to control what your players see on the map based on their character's line of sight at the time. To sign up for your free account right now, go to roll20.net forward slash start forward slash the dungeon booth. And please send your amazing stories of success and failure at the table to xp at the dungeon booth.com for a chance to have it featured on an upcoming episode and to win a prize and to just make me laugh and shake my head. Now back to the game. Um, so Thok, I have an idea. All right. <laughs> I think I know the smell. And I'll need your assistance. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what do you want to do? Well, you chugged all that ale. You still got it in you? Yeah, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> I haven't dehydrated yet. <laughs> is that so what monks? Is that how monks refer to it? Mm-hmm. I have to go dehydrate. dehydrate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a crazy idea. Just humor me. I'm um, just just try doing that. In in the in the path and see see what without question or hesitation, <laughs> Thok um, unbuttons his or undoes his <laughs> monk belt. Yes, is, is there any is there any modesty involved in this at all? <laughs> no, none whatsoever. Okay, Thok just drops trow and yes starts urinating on the where on the path on the path. Okay. On the path, and I can get both. I got, <laughs> got a lot of ale. You're, you're going to do a little bit of, and, a little bit of flinging it. Yeah, you're yeah. going to fling it. Okay. And Erica like tosses a berry where he's going. Okay, seeing what happens. This is a science experiment. We've got some variables at play. Limerick, what do you? <laughs> Limerick, do you have? Just thinking about my life and my choices. <laughs> Everything you know, evolved, didn't it? It just here we are. Uh, you successfully piss. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to make you roll for that. Do you have to roll for accuracy? <laughs> <laughs> I could make you roll for that, but I'm not going to. Um, and at the first drop that lands even close to the tangleweed, it recoils in horror. Oh. It it folds itself back in on itself and actually opens uh, what would be considered kind of like a like a indentation in the, in the tangleweed directly in proportion to where the droplet landed. All right, so I just whoosh, keep going all over the tangleweed. <laughs> Erica, like, pushes him forward. <laughs> Go! Is that the plan? Yeah, I'm just peeing all over this thing. Is that, okay, is that the Lewis plan? Okay, says, wait, 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 and, like, climbs on his back. I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're pantsless. You, your pants are at your ankles. Yeah. You have a half elf on your back, and what are you doing? You're following him. Yeah, just kind of pushing You're pushing him. his it's, butt. It's, you have your hands on his bare butt. Yeah, why not? Oh it's more Everything just got so familiar. Everything just so familiar. doesn't need it. We're family now. Yeah. It's Here a we very, are. Yeah, it's a very extreme situation yeah. you find yourselves in. Just whisper <laughs> limericks like, of encouragement into your ear. <laughs> I feel like in this time period, you know, uh, nudity and public intoxication are just kind of yes. like a regular That's day life. life. That's, That's life. life. Uh, so, you are basically a pissing battering ram yeah. as you shuffle <laughs> through this tangleweed. And sure enough, uh, are, are you just going full bore or are you trying to conserve? Uh, I'm just going. Once I start going, I can't <laughs> There's stop. There's no stopping it. Yeah. It's full bore. Yeah. So, you are full bore peeing. And there is a... There's an opening, and it's a very wide opening in front of you. The, the tangleweed is clearly just absolutely mortified by what's <laughs> happening right now. Uh, and your group, uh, your your tripod starts walking <laughs> into the tangleweed forward. But you soon find that you're running out of pee. Oh, come on, no. And it looks like there's, it looks like there's maybe 100 yards left to go. 
About a football field's length. I can pee a hundred yards. <laughs> uh, tangleweed to go. So you just peed your way through, let's say, you just peed your way through, let's say, a hundred yards of tangleweed. Okay. Now you're in the middle of a giant ring of tangleweed and you just ran out of pee. As, as I start dying down. All right, ladies, come on. <laughs> Tag, you're it. <laughs> Neither of us. So, I, I had a sip. <laughs> <I> <laughs> <laughs> this is when the, this is when like the DM should absolutely not give any hints whatsoever no. and just let you guys just just struggle with this. So <laughs> I, I guess I, we should have checked to see how long it took for the tangleweed to recoil. Look, after we should have done a on. lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, gonna ride a naked orc to my death, just like the old gypsy woman said. <laughs> <laughs> can we? I, um, yeah, can Limerick we, is okay. gonna try. She's like gonna see if I could if I could like fill a little bottle or something and just throw it. Or wait, what if what if I'll take my my monk jacket? Oh, can you like soak it? Soak it, (gasps) and then I love that and see if we can lead forward with it. I like that, like like that a lot. As long as you're holding it. (laughs) So I'm going full bore for the effect. Yeah. So as Erica, you're behind me soaking it up. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. (laughs) So we're we're gonna. Use a urine-soaked sash <laughs> to try to see if we can repel the, the tank of weed in front of us. Excellent. I love it. So you have a little bit left, and you whose sash is it? Yours? It's mine, because okay. I, have, I have like a... You got your tunic, yeah, and you got the tunic. little belt thing, yeah. the sash. So Limerick you take, is wearing like six skirts, <laughs> is not volunteering that information. Just, That's fine. You know? That's fair. Um, yeah, you soak it, and you, um, you're you going to use it, like kind of hold it Yeah, kind of like pressing it on them. Pressing it forward. As you're pressing it, it's good and soaked. As you're pressing it forward, it's working. The tangleweed yes. is peeling back just as it was before. We totally should have thought of this first. Yeah. <laughs> this, um... It was on a boot. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. did we have the boot? Uh, you don't, but you, oh, ha- okay. you have your own boots and you could have pissed on those. He has his own boots. I know, you don't have shoes. Well, Who yeah, do- you're on my back. Do you have shoes? <laughs> Erica, yeah, have you shoes. Do have shoes. Erica's okay. walking through the pee. I like the sash solution way better. I never would have come up with that. So thank you. Uh, you push your way through and you are about 20 yards from the edge of the tangleweed. And it starts undulating again oh, in the same gosh. way that you sort of noticed before. It's going to be this freaking bats. And you don't see anything. You're 20 yards away from the exit of the tangleweed. You see nothing, but it's kind of undulating. What do you want to do? I mean, I don't want these weeds to close in on us, so I suggest we just keep pushing forward with our pea shirt. Yeah. I mean, Erica's going to grab her great axe just in case she needs to, like, slice it some. You've got it ready. But, yeah, okay. it's out. I'm going to pull up ready. my pants because I'm done, up. done peeing. Man. Your pants, by the way, have been, dragging, <laughs> have been dragging along tangleweed, just shredded. It's just shredded now. So when you pull it back... <laughs> <laughs> so when you pull it back up, there's just, I mean, it's basically, it's just tatters. It's like strings of pants that were, I mean, they still cover you. So you're still I'm not co- hanging brain. No, no, <laughs> you're not, you're not indecent, but you sort of just look like, uh, like a really trashy nineties rapper, like with the big parachute <laughs> pants, but they're super shredded to pieces. So like the Hulk after transforming. Exactly right. Okay. Uh, exactly right. They're not purple um, though. Can I use my cantrips outside of battle? Yes. I would like to use Blade Ward on myself. Okay. Um, and if that extends to anyone else, great. But that it is not does her not. concern. Uh, so right Blade now. Ward uh, lets you, until the end of your next turn, resist against piercing and slashing damage. And bludgeoning, which just is, in case. Which is uh, <laughs> very useful when you're inside a gigantic forest of uh, bladed thorns. So yeah. you do. You cast it on yourself. You recite a little limerick in your mind to yourself. You don't even have to say it out loud. Um, and suddenly you, uh, have you, only, you can see it, but there's a halo sort of surrounding you. And, uh, if anything were to come in contact with you, then it would be reduced in its damage. Yay! So you, you're going to walk out of this, uh, tangleweed and you do, you, you walk the last 20 yards, it closes behind you. And now you see what it was. Uh, you've gone up a hill a bit. You didn't know that it didn't feel like you were going up a hill, because it was you're inside this giant forest of thorns, but now that you're out, you can see that you've climbed up the hill a bit. And looking back, you can see this thing, and it's about 15 feet tall, mm. uh, and it's just very, very slowly shambling its way through the tangleweed, not headed in your direction. It's a giant 
mound of what seems to be sentient or moving tendrils and vines. It looks like there is a mouth of some kind, maybe? You can't really tell. You're okay. too far away from it right now. Okay. And again, it, you, it's not, it, it seems to not be seeing you at all. Cool. So the good news is, it's not the bats. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news. <laughs> Elderwoodacademy.com is a crafter of fine tabletop gaming accessories that will take your tabletop game to the next level. So you've already got a hold of your Kodax dice tower. Now you need an amazing set of dice. For just about every game you play, you're going to need a set of dice. And it's a great way to show off your personality. It's a great way to show off your own aesthetic, your own style, by bringing out an incredible set of dice. Well, Elderwood Academy's got you covered with their Gemstone Phoenix Dice Set. They let you choose from gemstones including amethyst, blue striped agate, blue sandstone, howlite, kambaba jasper, lapis lazuli, mahogany obsidian, opalite, and rose quartz. And as I've told you before, my favorite design is the blue sandstone. You've got to go to the website and see it for yourself to check it out. You're going to get the standard set of seven polyhedral die, including 1d20, 1d12, 2d10, 1d8, and 1d6, and 1d4, and, 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 and. Having a sturdy set of die that are going to last a lifetime, that are that are beautiful and functional, is a great gift to give yourself if you're an avid gamer or to give someone else in your life if they're a big tabletop gamer. This is a really cool gift that you could give somebody. So please do go to elderwoodacademy.com. Take a look at the Gemstone Phoenix dice. I think you're really going to like what they've got to offer. Now, back to the game. You can see the tower in the distance. Uh, you, you have a better view of it now. It has two kind of window slits. It has a large iron door. It, it has clearly a second story. Uh, and it has a gargoyle that is hanging over the front door. And you don't see any motion. You don't see any lights. And you are all facing the tower right now. Well, first things first, I want to check to make sure there's nothing dangerous or nothing that is going, going to immediately affect us upon leaving the thorns. Okay. Uh, you do a quick kind of check behind your back and you just kind of look back. The thorns aren't moving. Um, you can still see that strange creature, whatever it is, but it's totally going in the opposite direction of you now. And you sort of intuit that maybe it also doesn't like the smell of urine, that, <laughs> that maybe the ammonia in the urine also affects it the same way that it seems to affect the tangleweed. Yeah, so what about what's in front of us? So what's in front of you is this tower. But there's nothing else, just it's the a, tower and this garden. It's a blank gap all the way up to the top of this rocky hill. All right. And there's the tower. There is a path. There's a path that leads sort of directly up to the door. Hmm. And we are on that path. You are on that path. Can I, from here, investigate the gargoyle? Uh, you can. Using my investigation you can skill? In, you can investigate it. Yeah. Roll to 16 plus 3. So 19. 19. So with a 19, even though you are... Quite a ways away. Um, you can tell that it's not stone. Mm. Uh, it's it looks it's made to look like stone, but mm. whatever it is is definitely a magical construct of some kind. In fact, as you watch it sort of carefully, you can see it moved Aww. just a little bit. Guys, it's doing its best to kind of sit there, <laughs> but it moved a little bit. I share this with the group. Yes. Uh, farts. <laughs> this is like Thox catchphrase. <laughs> I want to talk about this shambling thorn thing, though. Yeah. Do you think this is something uh, we should take care of now? Look. Before I'm... we escape post quest completion. I don't want to deal with whatever this is and have to make a quick escape and then run to this thing. Okay, so I'm of two minds on uh, Mr. Bo Shambles over here. <laughs> Um, he's not bothering us. And so there's a chance that he won't bother us, bother us when we leave. So. Right. Also, we're out of pee. <laughs> so. I'm wearing my pee shirt still. So. <laughs> I don't have a pee shirt. <laughs> well, I'm safe. <laughs> All right. We don't have to deal with it. That guy, though, we're walking toward him. So, so do you want to walk towards him just kind of three in a row like Wizard of Oz on the yellow brick road? <laughs> or do you want to try to stealth up to it and yeah, try to there, sneak up yeah, to it? Or is I, there any cover at all? I mean, we got these rocks. 
There's some rocks. There's some, there's some low kind of rocks that are very low to the ground. You'd, you'd need to be creeping kind of on all fours to, to use those for cover. I want to try and stealth. Well, okay. Wait, let's talk about our plan here. <laughs> for the first time yeah, right? in the entire campaign. We're two hours in. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about our plan. Uh, so obviously, we, uh, we know we're probably dealing with Ralavaz. Probably dealing with uh, Arthur and the rest of the Night Blades. Right. They are licking their wounds, though. We just want to sneak up and try to avoid this gargoyle and try and sneak in through some kind of back door or something. Do this sneakily. Or are we kicking in the front door? I kind of want to try something, and I think I might die. <laughs> I'm all ears. So The good thing is if you die, you get to go home. <laughs> I can uh, promise you that much. Yeah. Let's sorry, that's totally limerick. Um, <laughs> um I take out of my disguise kit uh some just crappy disguise clothing so nice. in shambles and the knight's blade okay. pin. Okay. Oh, this is so dumb, but I she's totally gonna do this. Awesome. Um <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to have a moment where I checked in with the character because this is dumb. Um, and she's just going to try to go in and also, if it moves again, try to address it in Elvish. Okay. And just... You need to describe for me what uh, what is your costume? Um, what, what does it look like? Just like ragged traveler clothes. Okay. Yeah, so not, not all pretty, just like... Yep. Trying to look yeah. as bedraggled as you can. Yeah, something okay. that she would use to like blend in in a big city to like be part of the, the a commoner. Slum. Yes, a low end commoner. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I think she wants to look exactly like one of the night blades. Yeah, that we one of the bandits. As best I can as with what I've got can. on me. Okay. Um. So you do that, and I, I want to do a a sneak check to just kind of get out of the way. Okay, you're just going to try to fade from view. Yeah, I'm going to let her do her thing. Yeah, and yeah. I do tell them. I tell them what I would like to do. Okay, you're so, so that I'm not just getting them dressed the I don't in want the this gargoyle to see me. Yeah, okay. So, so that gonna... she's just a lonely night blade returning from battle. Do you need me to rough you up a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> so you look bedraggled even more. Need is an interesting word. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say no. <laughs> All right. Uh. I definitely smell like your pee. <laughs> That's probably enough. <laughs> All right, I want to see if I hide. So you have something called Step of the Wind, and this allows you to double your distance covered on a turn. So right now, just as a monk just hanging out, you can go 50 feet, which is pretty far on a turn, but you can go 100 feet, lickety split just like that by using your key you you start basically running like you're in the matrix you go so fast that it's almost hard for the eye to see where you're going how far are we from the gargoyle or from the you tower? guys are, are probably about 60 yards away from the tower right now okay um but again it's it's up on top of a hill so if you wanted to you could certainly run to one side or the other and then attempt to hide but that is sort of leaving these two so mm. that's an option yeah, I'm going to go to the side a little bit and hopefully try and hide behind one of those little craggly rocks. Okay. And I'll use my key. I'll use okay. my s- step of the wind. Okay, so you do. You channel your key. And are you going to go to the right side or to the left side? I feel like this is going to either kill my character. <laughs> 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 I just kind of want to know so that I can get get the scene straight in my head. My right. Okay, so you're right. Um, you, Whichever one. Whichever side has a better hiding place. Do you explain <laughs> anything to them before you do that? Or do you just... <laughs> well, so after after Limerick sells her plan, mm-hmm. I'm going to go sneak. I'll be ready in case this gargoyle moves. I'm going off to the side. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, Erica. She's just going to stand there with her axe, like, above her head. You're even holding it up? You're 60 yards away from the gargoyle? Just like, <laughs> yeah, it's just or like, wait, can I take Erica with me? Can I grab her in Step of the Wind? Uh, you will break her arm. Oh. <laughs> that would be like if uh, Jet tried to take you with it. You know what? Uh, well, you, it's this, this plane is going to hold your arm while it accelerates to 300 miles an hour. 
okay. for 100 feet. Yeah. See ya. You would rip her arm but, out of its socket. Yeah, she's just watching the gargoyle, watching Limerick. Okay. Just ready to swing her axe. Ready to go. That's all she knows how to that's do. That's her life. Yeah. Limerick turns to Erica and says, um, before I do this, and most certainly die, because I just have to know <laughs> if I'm right, um, I just want to say, like, it was super cool when you chopped that dude's hand off. Oh my God. Thank so, you. Like, thanks for that. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Um, just remember are you, this. Are you crying right I'm now? Crying right <laughs> now. I, I just pat her on the shoulder and say, remember this moment. This if that thing. gargoyle comes for me. Oh, my life. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Erica's, okay. Erica's having a moment right now. All right, Are you is... still holding your axe while you're doing that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> still holding it up? Just tears streaming yeah. down. She's not wiping them away. <laughs> I want to give a big thank you to Mike Shea over at SlyFlourish.com. Fantastic Adventures is his book of 10 great, concisely written one-shot adventures, and it was the inspiration for this game. His site... SlyFlourish.com and the guides he has written are great for both veteran dungeon masters and for those who are coming to the game for the very first time. So go to SlyFlourish.com forward slash Fantastic Adventures and go get your own copy. I promise both you and your players will love, love this book. Follow Kyle Phillips on Twitter at KylePhillipsFun. Follow Felicia Angel on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as on her website at FeliciaAngel.com. Follow Jill Harris on Twitter at JillyBeanNomNom and on her website at JillHarrisVO.com. I'm voice actor and dungeon master Christopher Waycamp. Thank you for listening. Next time on The Dungeon Booth... Um, can you come out here for a second? Oh, are you like a new recruit? I am, and I've had a crazy day. Okay, do a deception check. See yes. if you can trick him. Mm. Uh, 15. Mm. 15 is good enough. Yes. Um, he says, uh, okay, uh, I'll, I'll be out there in a minute. Why do you need me to come outside? Look, I've had such a long day. Um, We got, like, everything kind of went totally sideways she's trying to kill you she wants oh. you to come outside <laughs> so that you she she and and polk polk goes shut up you idiot <laughs> <laughs>